But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. This is lesson study from the Albion SDA for the 13th Sabbath study. Let us pray. Brother, Brother Africa, would you pray? Let us bow our heads. Eternal God and our Father, we give you special thanks for your word that you have given unto us to make us wise unto salvation. As we are about to study more of your word, to know about you and to know you for ourselves, pray that you will enlighten us, send your Holy Spirit to teach us, to open our understanding and maybe gain a blessing from the study of the word. And may it benefit our hearts this afternoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, this lesson, the entire quarter's lesson, asks us to look at ourselves and look at how we study the Bible. It gives us insight as to how we should interpret what is there. And, give, and now this one, this particular lesson, is a lesson that most of us, myself, being at the top of the list, will have a problem with. Because it means introspecting, looking at ourselves and doing what the Bible says. Now, it's easy for me, for, for, for me to tell somebody what to do, but when I'm supposed to tell myself what to do, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a little bit more difficult. My name is Brother Easton Sproul, and I have with me Elder Owen Affleck. And we, we will go through the lesson with you today and hope that you will get something from it. Just open your mind and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in, in, in whatever way you want to. If I, if I may say here, um, Brother Sproul, I think all the other uh, 12 lessons hangs on this, very, this last lesson. True. Because if we, we, we can know the prophecies, we can know what the Bible says, because there are, uh, there are some of us who are very good at um, articulating the, the, the word, discussing and explaining. But when it comes, as you, as you said earlier, when it comes down to a self-application, this is where we have the problem, when we, where, where we go wrong sometimes. Yeah. So um, living by the word, this is how, and, and this is how we should um, align ourselves with the word. If we are not living the word, we have missed the mark. Here, here, here is the thing. Both of us are in professions that math is a, is a serious part of. And um, one of the things I learned when, 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 I, when I was doing math is you can't study it. You, you learn the principle, and then to get maths, you have to practice it. Practice. And this is how the word goes. You can study it, yes, and get the principle, but it makes no sense unless you practice it. Yeah. If you, the best possible way of understanding Christ and understanding what he teaches is to do what he says. Amen. Right? And, and this is what this week is about. Living what God tells us to do. And that is where we are going to start. The Holy Spirit teaching us what to do. Uh, but before we go, go there though, I'd just like to um, just read a few quotes from um, our paragraph from, um, from, from on Sabbath which says um, the best method of studying the Bible is of the best method of studying the Bible is of no use if we are not determined to live by what we by what we learn from scripture what is true for education in general also is true for studying the Bible as you mentioned earlier in particular you learn best not just by reading or hearing but by, what you just said a while ago, by practicing what you know, this obedience opens a full treasure house of divine blessings that otherwise would be closed to us and it leads us 
to an exciting and life-transforming way to increase our understanding and knowledge. If we are not willing to abide by the Word of God and are not willing to practice what we have studied, we will not grow and our weakness will be impaired because our life is not or is out of harmony with our words. Right. And, and there is where we want to look at that we have now looked at what is not to be and we want to look at what is to be. Yes. We will start now by as you should always when you take up the word of God is to ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you. This is why we pray. In whatever we do, we need to have the Holy Spirit guide us because the, the, the lesson will tell you and I, 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 I don't think I should read through the quarter lesson, but so, so sometimes you will hear me do just put in the, my own words. Yeah. The lesson will tell you that you will not understand the scriptures properly if you are not guided by the Holy Spirit. But a point here, um, Brother Sproul, uh, if you notice what the, the topic says, the subtopic for on the Sunday says, it says the living word of God and the Holy Spirit. There are two beings, there are two persons there. Yes. So that, and we know Christ to be the living word right. and the so Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So we, as you rightly said, we, couldn't, we, we, we can't fully understand or comprehend Christ except the Holy Spirit helps us to do so. True. Um, we were called Christians, meaning Christ-like, and being Christ-like, Christ only practice the truth. To practice the truth as Christ, we have to be guided by the Holy Spirit to get all the truth. And that is why Christ left us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. But I, I really don't want us to um, gloss over the the memory text. You mentioned it earlier, but I'd like to take it back there um, where James says in James chapter 2, James chapter 1 rather, and uh, verse 22, which is our main, is our key text for the week. It says here, um, are you there? Yes. But, we, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Where does Self-deception comes into just being um, a hearers of the word. How one is self is deceived by just hearing the word yeah, and not practicing it. There are some of us to say, who think that being at church, coming to church on Sabbath, and in some cases Sundays, mm. is enough. You are going to heaven. So you are just hearers of the word that time. Whatever you do from Monday to, or from Sunday to Friday, Monday to Saturday or Sunday to Friday, really doesn't matter. You are hearing the word once a week, you're good. That it doesn't work like that. To be Christ-like means you have to do the things. So, so um, there are those who will be jumping now to say, but that is works Christianity. No, it isn't. Here's where the Bible is saying, you must be doers, right? Revelation says that you will be judged by your works. So you have to do something to show that you have accepted. Mm -hmm. And you not only have accepted, you are in trying to be or, or ex extending yourself to be like Christ. Something has to be done. You have to pattern Christ's life. To be Christ-like. Okay, all right. We we'll move on. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let us look at Philippians chapter two. Philippians chapter two, uh, verses uh, twelve to sixteen. And the question is asked: What are these verses saying about how we should live? Because persons, even in our community, Brother Sproul, persons know us more or respect us more for what we do or we conduct ourselves as Christians, as, as, as community members. 
by what we, more than what we say. Because it, 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 it's all good and well for us to say nice things, yes. to, to preach and to tell people about God. But when what we say about God are, runs contrary to how we live, it sends mixed signals. True. I, 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 I have said this quite often. The day you, come, you got baptized, you start testifying. Yes. As to whether it is for your, life, your, for your Christ or against, against. it, is dependent on you. But you start testifying and what you, your testimony can either chase people out of church or bring people to God. Yes. Now, make the choice which one you want to do, but your life is a testimony. A lot of people hear the words. It's not the words many times that is so much of import, import to them. What they want is what to see how you live. And if you live the word, when they, when they see you live the word, they are drawn to this word. And it makes a more lasting impression, impression on them. On them yes. right. Could you, you um, Philippians 2, 12 to 16. We are for my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but no much in but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which work, worketh in you both to will and to do as his pleasure. Do all things without murmur, without murmuring and disputing, <clears throat> that ye may be blameless and harmless, the Son of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom he shines as light in the world. That's verse 15 or oh, 16. 16 yeah. Holding for the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labor in vain. Okay. So, Go ahead. notice the labor in vain and the run in vain. You can come to church every day in vain. And this, and this is by doing, by coming and not living the word of God. So it is important here that we live the word of God. This is what this text is saying. It is most important that we live the word of God. Yes, but I like, I like um, verse 12 though. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence, not as men please us, huh? not in my presence, but... But, but, but how much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? Because there are those of us who, who, who just, um, because we come to church. We reach. Not only, <laughs> well, not only. Um, we, we, because we are a church, we feel secure. And um, when we are by ourselves, we do things contrary to what we do at church, because we are in the presence, as he says here, not in my presence only, but in my absence as well. So therefore, when you are not under the spotlight, as it were, uh, you should continue to practice. That is why your life, your Christianity, as as, as he stated, evangelizing. Somebody coined the phrase evangelizing. That simply means you should live what you preach and practice what you teach. Good. All right. You want, you want to move to Monday? Okay, if there's no other further thought. Yeah. Um, but, but, but in, in the area it says that Philippians 2 and verse 16 says that we should hold fast the word of life. What do you think that means? And how do we do that? How, 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 hold, fa life. hold fast the word of life. Maybe what is that saying? Maybe my, my Bible says old for but it's, it's, it's not really much still. Yeah. Um, the word of life, holding, holding on to the word of life, and not just holding on to it, let it be, let be guided by the word of life. Right? I may rejoice in, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. And, and this, this day of Christ is, is, is a day when you're going to face him 
face, you're going to have to face him in the judgment. You may rejoice in the judgment because the judgment will vindicate you. All right. Okay. All right, we will move on. We move on when we, 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 we learn from, from Jesus. We learn from him. What life, when Christ was on earth, what kind of a life did Christ live? Um, Would you say it was a practical start, one? Let us start with, with where they want us to go. Mm. And where they want us to go is this temptation. But the point that they want to show us in his temptation is Christ's knowledge of scripture. And for you to have get that knowledge of scripture, knowing both text and context, mm. you have to read, you have to study. So, so the first thing here is that Christ was able to recognize Satan misusing scripture. Yes. And he was able to counter Satan's misuse with text used in context, right? Now, for you to be able to do that, mm -hmm. you have to study the word. Yes. And not only to study. Christ didn't only study the word, but he applied the word in a practical way. Exactly. And in by abiding by what the word says. All right? Because it, there's, it's a blessed are they that do his commandments. And they might have a right to the tree of life. Huh? Yeah. Blessed are they that do not only to say, but to practice, practice your, your, oh, um, the, practice. the word. Yes, agree. You want us to go to, you want to go to Luke 4 and verse, um, verse 4? I was there. Yes. Um, verse 4 says, And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I'm sure your, your, your own might, might yeah, differ, yeah, what you differ slightly. Okay. I think I, I have one that said that every word that cometh out of the mouth of God. God. I proceeded I out of the mouth of God. Out of yeah. the mouth. But mine, mine kind of have a little more concise. I'm wondering if it's a King James. <laughs> okay, all right. all right. Anyway, yes. Right? Now, and verse 8 says, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. Now, notice both texts start with it is written. That means it is coming from Scripture. Yes. All right? It is written, Thou shalt not, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and in him only shall thou, and him only shall thou serve. And then there's 10 to 12 that says, For it is written, ye shall, now this is Satan speaking here, for it is written, he shall give thee and they'll charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. We're talking about um, Jesus knowing the word, that he could quote the word. Um, by heart, as we use the term, by heart. Mm -hmm. Is there any danger in us knowing of a head knowledge of the word in that way that you can quote scripture by heart and yet um, not abiding by it? Yes, ma'am. There is a great responsibility to self, which is not adhere to mm -hmm. when you just know the word and know it really well and can quote it really well because yes. you see I've, I've, I've spoken to people who can quote some obscure text to prove their point that God is either wicked, demonic or non-existent and this is coming from scripture so they, they know the text but the text really has nothing to do with their lives Nothing at all. Mm -hmm. They use the text liberally to prove their point. Yeah. But not to live wholesome lives. So there's a great danger of that. Okay. So unless the text um, 
let me put it this way. Let me let there's a take there's a, a quotation here. Um where did I see it? Oh yes, in on, on Sunday it says the ultimate goal of studying the Bible lies not in acquiring knowledge as as wonderful as that can be. Yes. The goal is about mass is not about mastering the word of God. Yes. But about the word of God mastering, mastering us. us. Mm -hmm. That is yes. <laughs> that yes. was a that's a beautiful quotation from, from, from the quarterly, which, which which points to what the word should do to our lives. Yes, it, as it says, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's, it's, it's a beauty, you know. When I sit down and listen to some persons um, expounding the word, teaching the word, preaching the word, and understanding it, but um, <laughs> when it comes on to living the word, it's a different ball game. True. And sometimes, sometimes you wonder when you, when you see persons so well learned in, in, in scripture, find themselves positioned so highly in church and in, in church organization. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you hear some of the, the deviation from, from the truth that they make, you wonder, you really wonder, what was the word doing to their lives? Was it being used at all, right? Okay. All right, the last paragraph on the Monday, it says um, in John 7, verse 38, Jesus, the word of God, made flesh, referred his followers back to what scripture said. It is only through the Bible that we know that Jesus is a promised Messiah. It is the scriptures that testify of him. Um, John 5, 39, Jesus himself was willing to abide by the scriptures, the word of God committed to writing. If he was willing to do that, what does that tell us about what we should do as well? So if the master teacher, the son of God, the creator could abide by the word of God, by the word of scripture, the scripture, um, and abide here means, means that we should stay live in. by it. Live in, stay in. Right, uh, right. So, what says us? What says it about about us? What should we do? Also, we should do the very same. The very, very same. And um, it, 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 it's no, it's no easy thing. I don't want anyone who is listening to think that it is, an, is an easy thing for us to do. For one or, to do, or, to yes. Or um, I don't want anyone listening to think that. I am perfect. I'm not going to speak for Brother Africa. I'm speaking for me. <laughs> Nobody should listen here and think that Brother Sproul is the perfect Christian. What we are really doing here is preaching to ourselves. I'm preaching to myself. I need to do as much as I can to get as close to Christ as I can. So don't think that I'm badgering you. I'm badgering myself. I'm talking to me. Just, you are just listening to what I'm saying to myself. <laughs> All right, we can move on. Yes, we can. Jesus versus the scripture. If ever there was a statement of oxymoron, this is one. There is no difference between Jesus and scripture. In my personal experience, there is no difference. It's when Jesus has never gone outside of scripture. He, he has expanded, he has elaborated, he has expounded, he has extended it to, to, to areas that we would not be looking as we have been doing sitting at this table but at no time he has gone against it mm -hmm. it is always in the same direction right and and whichever text uh, there are a few issue instances here in in, in, in in the quarterly that 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 it was pointed to um we could either go through those or we could even look at others. Okay. When Jesus, for instance, says, talks about murder, and he, says, and, and, and he says, you have heard it said that thou shalt not commit murder. And I am saying to you that if you have looked at your brother with malice in your heart, you have committed murder in your heart. Mm -hmm. That is not going against sticks. 
Okay. That, is, that is taking text to a level where you, you start seeing where I shouldn't eat. Eating means that I'm killing my brother in my heart. Okay. It's not going against text. It's going with the same direction that text is going. Right? Okay, okay. And the same thing of lust and so on and so forth. So um, we can look at John 5, 45 to 47. John 5. John 5, 45 to 47. Let me re can read here. Um, it says, do not think that I will accuse you to do to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom he trusts. For had ye believed Moses, he should have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if he believe not his writings, how shall he believe my words? That is, uh, Je that is Jesus saying, yes. whatever Moses write, and where did Moses write? In the scriptures. Yes, but it's not just in the scriptures. It is the first five books of the Bible, oh. mm -hmm. the laws. So those of us who, 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 who think that the law was done away with, here's Jesus saying that, just believe Moses and you are believing me. So Jesus didn't do away with the, 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 the Torah. Yes. Jesus is saying that if you believe Moses, you believe me. Oh, because it says here that some people claim that when Jesus spoke, he put his words in stark contrast to the words of Scripture. As we find them in the Old Testament, they say that the words of Jesus are even elevated above the words of Scripture. The, the, word, the word of Jesus is Scripture. That's, that's how I interpret it. The word, the Jesus says, you search the scripture. This is speaking to the yes. Pharisees. You search the scriptures seeking eternal life. These are they that testify of me. He's not only called, he's not only called the word, he's the living word. Mm -hmm. so, so the word, the word then is Jesus. The word then is Jesus. And therefore, we cannot find, we cannot say anything outside of scripture that, or inside of scripture that is against Christ, because he is the word, he is scripture. Okay. All right. Um, we are pressed for time, so. Wednesday. Quiet times, quiet, quiet times, times. And, and, and with the word of God. Here, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Most of us will find time to go lock up in the closet and we, and we, and we, we, we read and we pray and those are quiet time. But I'm going to look at noise. The noise I want to look at is not the noise of the sounds around you. Mm -hmm. It's the one that is within you. Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Affleck, sometimes you have some rough days at work. And you want to sit down and, and do some praying or some reading of the Bible. But every time you look at open the book, you remember the wire you didn't connect. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you silence those, the things from the hard days world, from the, the, the troubles and cares of the world, to really spend time in the world? And one of, one of, one of the, 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 the things is, is found on Thursday, but, 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 but let us look at it now. How do you silence those thoughts? I know when you want to sleep, somebody say you count sheep. For you to count sheep, you have to start think about sheep. So you take all of the cares out of your mind and start thinking about sheep and count them one and going over a fence. How do you do the same thing to bring your focus on the things of God when you want to get out of the cares of the world the day and getting rid of those daily noise that continue, continue to haunt you when you are going into your quiet time? Well, the scriptures, if you're talking about being on the job and having a quiet time, um, it, 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 it's, it, it, it's somewhat, you can have your quiet moments um, mentally while you're on the job because the Bible says that you should pray without ceasing. 
And that doesn't mean, as you, you know, we should assume a position of um, kneeling or, stand, or, stopping, or stopping what you're doing and pray. But your life should be alive. Prayer is talking to God, isn't that so? So you constantly, whatever your, your, your occupation, whatever your activity, as a child of God, you should be always talking to God, even amidst the noise, physical noise that you hear. But I think what they're zooming on in here now is to take time out, to spend time with the Word, quiet it. moments with God. And, and that is the time I'm talking about. Because yeah. you see, when you said, when you are in a car, for instance, and you notice that the driver isn't so wholesome, mm. to say, Lord, have mercy, be the guy, protect us from this sort of driving. Mm -hmm. That is different from when you want to really spend quality time with God. And we are talking about you now wanting to spend some quality time while the, the cares of the day's activity is still bothering your mind. You, you, you have this tendency sometimes, you, 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 you kneel down, you want to pray, and then as you start to pray, you remember the, 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 the bad behavior of your co-worker. You remember the, the boss saying something that you didn't like. You remember the customer doing something that was out of order. And, and, and all of that now start to off the thought of a, your, your prayer one, throw off the thought of a reading the word. Even when you read the word, it comes like it come in jumbled because it's not in sin. You want, you want to clear, wipe that part of your mind or silence that part of your mind. How do you do it? But sometimes that is difficult. What you have to do is to shut it out. Oh, it's a oh, try, huh? oh, you shut it out. Well, well you, you, you I, I can't tell you, well, I would, I, oh, I shut it out? Mm -hmm. Just ignore it. Just ignore it and tell myself, because you are in control of your, yourself, right? And if whatever you want to do in life, you cannot do it, as long as you possess the will to do it. So therefore, when you are bombarded with these negative thoughts, with these things, what you can, you, can, you can shut it out by just ignoring it and tell yourself that, look here, you can stay there, but this is what I'm going to focus on right one, now. One of the things I find, one of the things I find, I find very effective is, is, for instance, is singing. Okay. But it works for me. I don't know if it will work for everybody. If I, yeah. Sometimes I, 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 I have some songs that I just sing them and... You, you sing those songs and your mind becomes focused on the things of God. And it wipes out all of the, 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 the things that are distracting you. And after, after doing that for a while, then you find that you can go in your meditation and you can go in your reading and you can go in your concentration much more effectively than when the idea of bothering you, you start remember this and you remember that. So singing, but I wouldn't say that it's a panacea. But okay, it works for but, me. but the, the, the lesson alludes to it as well. I don't know if it's sorry, in the lesson, but it, it alludes to it. It says music forms yeah. a part of God's worship right. in the course above, and we should endeavor in our songs of praise to approach as nearly as possible to the harmony of the heavenly choirs. So therefore, this tells us, as we are on Thursday, closing off now, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hide and this is how we can, as it were, shut out some of the things, the distractions that we have to f uh, facing us on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so we hide God's word in our heart so that we can live by his precepts. So we started about talking about living the word, and we can live by his precepts. Yes. Okay, thank you, Brother Spall, for sharing. I hope and trust that all those who listened uh, will uh, apply, their, apply their, 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 their minds and their hearts to the lesson, uh, to the teachings of Christ, so that we can be better children of God and live in harmony with his, his word. Thank you. Thank Just, you, Brother Affleck. Um, it was a pleasure doing the lesson with you. Amen. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for those who listened, and we thank you, Lord, for those who learned. Help, help them, Lord, to and help us, Lord, to touch our own lives with the word that was discussed today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.